I love quick switching and for this video I'm going to see if it's possible to have fun without doing it and we're going to break down each of the weapon mods and find out is this fun or not. So first off we're going to look at the Cyber Mancubus. You can still take him out without quick switching just like that. That's fine. But the biggest non quick switching weapon I think is the chain gun. Yes, but you know we're going to start off with the shield. Everybody loves this weapon right here and you can actually get into some bad habits if you're doing what I'm doing right now because the chain gun has around 800 damage per second and the mobile turret has around 1200. So if you are constantly in your chain gun shield like this firing away, you're actually losing out on damage if you're a quick switcher. If you're not, then you're fine. But the whole point of this video is for me to experiment with non quick switching alternatives and finding out what works and what doesn't. Cacodemons and the Arbalest are fine because it's not necessarily a weapon that is based off of swaps. And like I said, we'll be take, taking a look at every single weapon mod here just from past this section. Now the Tyrant. Let's give Mobile Turret a little bit of love. It does not get really any attention at all, it seems like, in, in the community compared to some other weapons. But look at this pure power, especially with the quad damage. It just rips the Tyrant down. If it does 1200 DPS normally, and then if you add on another 4 to that, that's massive. And especially once you master it to where it does not have to overheat on you anymore, it's great. So yeah, I can see the Mobile Turret being fun, and honestly, I believe that if it were not for the shield, it would get more usage. It really would, because it is not a bad gun. The problem with the mobile turret is it's just outclassed so heavily. So let's experiment when we come down here too. What, what's interesting to know is that the chain gun, much like its classic counterpart, actually falters the night class at a steadier rate, whether it's mobile turret, whether it's not. And I believe that's a callback to the classic pain chance from the old dooms where the chain gun would do this. So let me show you exactly what I mean here. Say the knight's coming at you. Look at that. He just keeps faltering back more easily and I can just unload a mobile turret on this Baron, a singular Baron, and what happens? Nothing. He doesn't even have a chance. Now of course if you're in an arena and there are other things going on, it may not be as easy, but I think it's I think it stands that if we didn't have the shield, the mobile turret would be a lot better. But there's still some other alternatives we need to look at. We've not looked at any of the plasma. We'll take a look at that in a second, but first I want to show you the Calabas eyes. There's a really cool trick I learned in a video I want to show you. Now normally, this is going to be interesting because for these guys, I like to do an Arbalist put into a rocket. But of course, if you're not swapping, you can't. So what options do you have? Well, Arbalist is still one of the greatest, and you can do a double one and you're fine. But what's so interesting to me is we're going to shoot that eye once and then twice, and then we're going to let it shut and we're going to send an Arbalist at it because well, we better be paying attention to some of the other things in the area too, right? I learned this from a Doom Guy bot video. Let's actually get rid of that. As long as the eyes are open once, you can still kill them. Let's see if I can pull that off. Look at that. So interesting. Rockets are another good alternative, but you have to remember these pain elementals that come in the distance. Well, Arbalist is also good. We're going to try Lock On. It's everyone's favorite. Now, once you kill two of these eyes, the two pain elementals spawn, and that's it. They're not infinite like many people think they are. I actually covered that in a Trigger Enemy video. But as you can see, everyone says that, oh, you have to quick swap. It's the most important thing in the game, but it's really not. Let's try some sticky bombs. I mean, you can swap with them with precision bolt, but you don't have to. I usually don't. Oh, we missed out on that one. Now we still, gosh, we still have so many more mods to check out. We have uh, Ballista we've messed with a little bit. We have some rocket launcher, remote detonation. We have all the shotgun. This is going to be interesting to see how these actually fare in battle because we have a pretty nice arena coming up that I think we should see what happens. What should we use next? Let's try, oh, full auto. Remember, the goal is not to quick swap. So I wanna see how each of these weapons fare standalone, not just as finishers. And also maybe we need to play with the plasma too. Full auto, I think if it, it's another addition of being kind of outclassed by some of the player base. If the super shotgun here didn't exist, I think full auto may get more usage. It's a hard call, but again, it's another night class, the chain gun, or the shield, shines through in the faltering. Now, when we're looking at the full auto, let's, let's see what happens. Now, let's look at microwave beam. Normally, you could do microwave, swap off to the rocket launcher, and really get them. This is tough, because microwave by itself takes a really long time, and you just have to sit there with it, right? So it's kind of, even though the base design was going to seem like it would be a long sustained fire, I just don't feel like that practically it works. So we'll take a look at some of the other ideas here. Let's go to the stickies again because we have a caco. Oh, get down Mr. President moment right there, huh? Because it was totally blocked off right there, interestingly enough. 
you know what? Let's try this. Let's try this. Everything is blocking. And then the <laughs> everything blocked the Kako, and then he actually met his demise by the Crusher. That's about hilarious. What about this Archvile coming up? I think he'd be interesting to see, right? Let's get rid of this guy. That's not swapping, remember. We have Remote Detonation. Let's play with it. It doesn't really rely on long things like the... Oh, look at the Archvile. Look out. Like anything else, but, but you know what? Just die. Okay, so let's try... Oh, he's going to be getting me. Let's break his shield. Stop you. Microwave on this guy works pretty well, but the whole thing about it, you have to sit for too long. I can really see quick swapping and microwave working you all together. So let's do Heat Blast. Yeah, that's a good one because, I mean, if you think... He really what fell into that trap. If you think about it, the plasma is not a quick swap weapon in general. Like, it's based around sustained fire. You do it with the microwave. You build it up with the Heat Blast. So let's, let's try something else here. What have we not done yet? We've done a Super Shotgun. <laughs> PB Rocket is one of the greatest, but... but Let's talk about that SSG. When you don't cancel its animation out, it's pretty dang slow to fire, right? Well, let's actually use the precision bolt in the intended method. Wait for the cooldown. Now, the upgrades for the PB are actually nice if you use it in the intended way. So let me show you. Movement speed increased, reload speed increased. I mean, think about it. I have a really buffed precision bolt and I go for their weak points right there. I honestly believe if quick swapping didn't exist, of course, the precision bolt would get less usage. I just don't know. I want to know what you think in the comments. Do you think anyone would use it as a sniper rifle? Because that's kind of what it is without having all the swaps. Like, the precision bolt is so useful in all of these movements that we do. Am I going to make it? Sweet. That it's just, it's just so unnatural to snipe with it. But I'm going to mess with it a little more. We're also going to play around with the micro missiles too. So let's think about, let's do some, let's do some sniper rifle, eternal snipe. The, the problem is I have to wait for that cooldown and it's, it's not the same. Okay. You know, we're going to, we're going to mess with some micro missiles. We have to, they don't falter demons. So they're not great for going into cyber manky buy like that. Thankfully we have the frags for that. What's next? Oh, we've not, we've not played with the destroyer blade yet. We need to try that one. It's not really one you really honestly quick swap much with, but Ah, oh, man, if it's not one of the greatest mods in the existence of the world. Thankfully, you don't need to swap for Blood Punch. All that punch tech, you know, the whole, let me see if we can do it here. That stuff, all that swapping. But aside from all that, let's let's actually increase my no-clip speed because I turned it down. That's much better. Aside from that, let's take a look at the Marauder section. What if we don't want to swap on a Marauder? And that means no... No SSG Ballista. The Marauder is an enemy that I really feel like was built around for quick swapping. You know, even if it's the most basic swaps. So let's see. We'll try Mobile Turret. I know the Shield Bash is busted for sure. That works. That works. You're going to probably get a Doggo with you there, but uh, uh, no swaps, no swaps. Oh, this is painful. This is so painful. I'm so used to doing the swaps that <laughs> if I can't, it really sucks. Oh, the Whiplash has to go. I did a swap. Okay, so let's just do a single ballista. You know what? Let's just do it. Oh, I did it again. Oh, this is so difficult when you're used to it. Oh, this is so difficult. Let's try SSG. That's a nice weapon. You can get two shots off. That's fair. And he does a huge launch. I think that's pretty nice. We could do stickies. Yeah, that's fine. We could do stickies at the feet. That's another way of handling a marauder without swaps. But man, I really miss it. You can do a microwave with the dog. Trying to microwave him in general. Yeah, it's definitely taking a lot longer to do it that way. That's fine. Thankfully, he's over and done with. Now, what about this last arena with all these enemies in it? How will this be affected without swaps? Hmm. I think you can still have fun as I am, but I think we need to try this final arena first. I did not just swap there. You didn't see that. Of course, we've also been refraining from using BFG and Crucible. Those are great tools if you don't have any quick swaps at hand. Of course, Lock On Burst is probably the king. I mean, how do you get around lock on? How? And I fully believe you, hey, you don't have to have quick swapping to win. I know I'm kind of memeing it up a little bit right now, just being, you know, goofy with the playthrough. But if this was an Ultra Nightmare run for serious, I think you totally could. You know, that's why the players that you, if you play on controller and you don't have all the back paddles, which I've never tried myself. If you have, let me know. I hear they're amazing. Hugo loves them. I mean, you can still do okay. When I did my controller run, I actually played controller eternal the other day. I did okay. I didn't do the greatest, but, but there's so much more to it than just the swaps. And you think about, ah, see, it's habit. Some of these weapons are just built. Built for it, right? 
I remember when the game came out, there was quick swapping, and a recent update had changed it, but they fixed it back because the community just really wanted to have the swaps in play. And I think they're a great thing to have in, in Eternal. I mean, you can totally use a BFG. Oh, we got the delay. You can totally have a lot of damage output, especially if you use that mobile turret. For example, let me show you right here. We'll falter, no swap, and we're just going to mobile turret him all the way. We're just going to focus these Doom Hunters. Really, really play around. Now, they're actually sledless weak to the micro missiles, and if you do use the micro missiles on the Doom Hunter, it does not matter. If you use them on their sled, it doesn't matter if you hit the shield or not, which is super interesting because you think it would, right? So let's see what else is there. We have microwave beam. I just, it's so tough. It's tough, man, because you really don't want to sit there all day long. But with the Doom Hunter, I guess it does kind of work. Let's experiment with this just a little more. Ah, we better go and hit, get, get some health, right? What else is there left to mess with? We have full auto. We've not done full auto enough. Let's try that a little bit. Full auto on the sled is nice. It's a finisher, so really, yeah. We also have the Unmaker we've not tried. It's not a quick swapping gun. Let's play with it a little bit. Gosh, I, I really miss the BFG. But it, hey, there's no doubt that it really does help with super heavies. Because remember earlier in the video, I talked about these supers. Okay, let's figure this out here. What if we wanted to finish off this Doom Hunter? I think we'll do the Remote Debt Mayo into a Blood Punch. Again, that's not a swap. Man, I miss Lock On when I do this. Don't you? And here's the coolest way to get past this situation. Rather than going up all the way around, all you have to do is no clip up to the top, hit the statue, and knock her down. Do I think you can have fun in this game without quick swapping? My verdict, honestly... Yeah, I think you can, but I really enjoy swaps a whole lot, so I'm going to keep doing them. Check out the video on the worst weapon mods here. I'm Austin. Thank you for watching.